Welcome back, everyone. In the previous video, we left up over here where we defined the cross entropy loss function. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about it. And I want you guys and girls to understand the mathematics behind it. Okay. So I'm going to switch over here and let's assume the following over here. We have three classes. Okay. So, you know, I could, I could edit this. So this could belong to business. This could belong to technology and this could belong to entertainment. Okay. And let's assume we have, uh, this is our input. The office is a great TV show. Okay. So we have the input. The office is a great TV show. And over here, we have the true class labels for the predicted probabilities. So in this case, our model was 70% sure that this, the office is a great TV show belongs to entertainment. And that's right because it doesn't belong to the business or technology category. Okay. And just a heads up. Uh, I know that in our actual model that we're working on, we have four uh, classes. We also have health, but for this example, you know, uh, we don't need to have all four. Now we need to one hot encode the true label of the sentence. The office is a great TV show. And that means we get a zero for business. We get a zero for technology and we get a one for entertainment. So this is the true label. Okay. For this sentence, here are the predicted probabilities that our model has guessed. It guessed, you know, that it belongs to business 10%. It belongs to technology 20% and it belongs to entertainment 70%. Okay. So now we calculate the loss with the cross entropy loss function and we use this formula. Now, obviously in our example right now, we only have one example. <laughs> the office is a great TV show. So that means we're going to get one loss value. But in real life, when you train, you just have a bunch of values and you add them up. Hence the summation notation. Okay. So you would just add up the losses for every single input. So if we had other inputs beside the office is a great TV show, you would just sum them up. Okay. And you have to plug in the values and this Y C over here is the Y correct. So for class zero, the correct value is zero times log 0 0.1. The zero comes from over here because it doesn't belong to class zero, which is business. So that's why you have zero times log and then the 0 0.1, which is the probability. Okay. So you get zero for class of one. You also do the same thing. You do the Y C the Y correct, which is a zero, because again, you have a zero over here. The second value is a zero. And then you multiply it with log 0 0.2 and it's 0 0.2 because it gave a 20% chance that it's technology. And this again is going to be zero. Now for class two, which is the correct class, which is entertainment, we do one, which we get from over here times log of 0 0.7. And so this is going to give us log of 0 0.7. And again, since Y zero and Y one are zero, their contributions to the loss is zero. So we only consider the term where the Y C or the Y correct is one, which is for class two in this category. Okay. So now we get the loss is equal to 0 0.3567. So what we would do is we would iterate over all the examples and we would add up these losses. So for this example, where the true class is two and the predicted probabilities are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, the cross entropy loss would be approximately 0 0.3567. Now, a perfect loss would mean that the model is... Let's edit this and I would show you what the perfect loss would mean. It would mean that we have 0, 0.0 here, 0, 0.0, and this would be 1.0. Okay. And that would mean that our loss would be zero, right? Because log of one is equal to zero. So that means we have no loss at all. Okay. So over here, instead of log 0 0.7, we would have log one. Why log one? Well, over here, we would have one times log times one, which would be equal to log of one, zero. 
So if it's 100% sure that it belongs to the entertainment category, that means it has a loss of zero. But that's very unlikely, you know. Usually machine learning models are about like 90 and 99% sure in something. So your loss will never truly be zero if it's, you know, for a larger data set. If it's for a small data set, like five, 10 examples, and you really overfit it, you know, you could have a loss of zero, but that's a bad thing. So I just wanted to, to show you what log of one would be, okay? So I hope that helped you understand cross entropy loss. And in the next video, we're going to continue setting up our script.py.